All right, here we are in the fit area. And I'm gonna sneak up on the inimitable Tim Doherty of Fit First Solutions working here in the Cyclecraft Fit Lab. So I've decided to add a thing called Friday Fit Tips. Hey, Tim. Hi, Brendan. How's it going, man? Pretty good, and yourself today? I can't complain. What are awesome. you working on? I am getting my double stick adhesive ready for our next fit victim that we take these and we attach them so they stick on either side and then the other sticky part sticks on our client. Yeah. So uh, just some, some pre-fit work before uh, our next client shows up. Cool. Hey, so for Fit Tip Friday, I'm going to do this every Friday. I'm going to try and sneak in a question because people have a lot of questions about fit. And nice. as, as you know, I, I spend a lot of time uh, cruising the internet asking people about, uh, you know, participating in various things. And questions always come up in some of these, uh, like the Facebook groups are always good. And so, mm -hmm. I, and I get great questions out of there. And some of the questions seem kind of obvious and maybe not, maybe to us, hard to say. But I'm going to throw out the very first question that I seem to come across a lot is when it's saddle pain. And, and people say, I have a big fat butt. Should I get a big fat saddle? So what's the story with, what, what do I got to do to get a comfortable seat, Tim? Well, uh, we have to have it in the right place for starters. That will definitely change our odds of having success with how things feel. So if we're talking about, let's just narrow down a little bit to genre and say a road cyclist who is clipped in. If the cleat is too far back or too far forward on the shoe, or if the saddle is too far forward or, or too far back, shall we call them out of the normal range? The discomfort is also out of the normal range. So we need to keep it within the parameters of our client and the other parts of attachment to the bike, the handlebar, and then the shoes and the feet. Uh, so, so it's not just a matter of sitting down on any old saddle and... No, there are definitely other factors involved besides the saddle itself. Uh, there are certain saddles that uh, I find have greater success rates with certain individuals. But to go deeper into that is, is really open a Pandora's box without getting more information from our client in regards to how they're shaped, gotcha. uh, how they stand, what part of them they're sitting on, what is the purpose, what is the duration, uh, what is their stability like, shall we say, with their muscles, so, can they hold right. themselves up? You know? and, and so if my, friend, uh, if my friend recommended, this is the best saddle ever, and then I try it, and it feels like it's not the best saddle ever, or this is terrible. So that, you really, just because your friend is riding it doesn't make it uh, a saddle that's going to be good for, uh, for you. Saddle choices are really personal preference, and even things such as uh, having a twin brother doesn't mean that he's going to like your same seat, and I guess I can speak from experience with that. You have a twin brother, don't you? I do. And you guys don't ride the same saddle, do you? That is correct. Awesome. All right, hey, well, thanks, Tim. We're going to let you get back to work, and uh, we'll see you next Friday. Thanks for stopping in.